Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm really excited to announce that I'm going to be bringing Marcus Bell over to America from England to do two different two-day golf schools here in California at the Golf Club of Rancho California in Murrieta. Marcus is a really, really amazing and interesting coach because he teaches in a way that I think is completely unique and amazingly effective. The before and afters you see from when people work with Marcus at his schools and then on his channel, GRF Golf, is just really, really amazing. If you click the link below, you'll see more information about the school. It's coming up in November on 13th and 14th, and then again on the 15th and 16th. So we're bringing them out here. We're gonna be doing some content with Marcus, but we're gonna be having two very small schools, only I think about six people at each school, and uh, to really dive deep into the way Mar Marcus gets somebody to change their motor program and to do something differently and better is very, very interesting and effective because I did some videos with Marcus before, like via Skype, where I would, I think the title of the video was something like, this coach teaches without telling you what to do or teaches without instructions or something like that. Because uh, he found that just telling someone to, to do something was not really that helpful. But getting them to start moving in different ways and exploring different ways of, of motion and doing something, you start to discover it on your own. So it's really the journey that takes people to better golf working with Marcus is a lot different than what a lot of other people are doing. So we're going to be having a Be Better Golf slash GRF Golf School coming up in November on the 13th and 14th and then again on the 15th and 16th eric mike tree is hosting us out at the golf club of rancher california i think we're going to be going to journey as well uh which is an amazing golf course as well i think we're going to be going out there as well and um having like an amazing lunch awesome two-day school super intense wow. we're hey. going to be hitting uh, a ton of balls doing a lot of uh, motion and motor control exercises that the way that marcus teaches it is just really really impactful and really interesting too. So go to the link below or go to bebettergolf.net slash school and you'll see everything about our upcoming school. Hope to see you there. Bye. This is called Be Better Golf. So what is your philosophy on how the best way somebody can get better at golf and how do you think people usually go about it with golf and how do you think that there could be an either easier or more direct and better way? Um, well, I think the traditional way has been to be instructed uh, to some kind of uh, concept or model, um, and in a in quite a deliberate way. So there's conscious cueing. There's um, very much a more of a kind of deliberate execution of movement. So it's more of it's kind of a a building a golf swing, if you like. Whereas if you think about most sports, um, movement really just emerges. It emerges really uh, under the constraints of the game. So how you react to the environment, how you react to the equipment, um, and how you react to really the affordances. It's really about affordances. It's an opportunity for movement. Could you give us an example, like in a, in a sport other than golf, like what would be an example of a constraint that then affords uh, opportunities to learn? So for, I mean, for tennis. So for tennis, hitting the ball over the net. So hitting the ball over the net, requires a, a swing, it requires a control of the face, it requires a, an angle of attack, um, a release, and just by effectively doing experiential training, experiential learning, you are starting to refine the movement. So the body, the body has a, a huge amount of degrees of freedom available to it for mo movement potential. What the body's very, very good at um, is self-organizing that movement in response to some form of intention. So it's the intention that's really, really critical. What what are we actually asking our body to do? What are we responding to? It's kind of, um, there are attractors that we are responding to in the game. Um, and that kind of starts to really influence how we react. So playing tennis, for example, hitting the ball over the net, where do you want the ball to land? This kind of thing is going to influence how hard you're going to hit, how much how much speed you're going to create. And then you're going to start to 
uh, be creative and start to spin the ball, maybe top spin. So you start to play around with the angles. And this is really all based around a perception of what you of, of the intention. So it's before we start even talking about any mechanics, we're really reacting to the game, the demands of the game, and we're starting to create movement really very intuitively. So you're saying that in in most sports, and certainly like a, as you and I have watched our kids learn to ride bikes and walk and stuff, uh, you're you're saying that the intention brings the mechanic. Yeah. Um, and so the, it's the intention of trying to do certain things and failing in a lot of different ways. Seems like most golf lessons try to go about it the other way. Yeah, absolutely. Most most golf lessons are, that that I've um, I've experienced or look on look see on YouTube and things like that work on more of a, a reductionist approach. So yeah, try, so trying to get the the pupil to adhere to some kind of to conform to some kind of concept or movement. And they may not even possess a level of self-awareness to even achieve that. And it may not even be within the body's motor maps. It's, 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 uh, it's constrained. It's, um, the body's, the body's, um, it's able to adapt. It needs an intention, but, but it also needs the opportunity to, to self-organize with variability. So we're not trying to be very specific. We're trying to allow the body to explore. It's a, it's a journey of self-discovery where ultimately your your most functional pattern emerges. But the key to this is that it's able to adapt. So it's not a strict, rigid pattern. Um, it's it's malleable. It's there's plasticity to this system. So we want to play around with those that variability and. Um, allow the body to optimize ultimately its own movement patterns. So we're not we're not telling the body what to do. Say we are we're allowing it to we're listening to the body. Essentially, we are we are if you like challenging the body because the golf swing is just a movement solution. So it's the body's movement solution, and if it's not providing the solution that you intended, then you've got to question yourself. Well, maybe I'm not giving it the right information. Maybe I'm Maybe I'm. Maybe my information is a little bit distorted. Maybe my attention is not in the right place. Maybe my awareness is, yeah, maybe distorted. A lot of people, they kind of think about the golf swing as, as chunks of kind of movements yeah. that, they're, that they're piecing together. The so, back swing chunk, the transition chunk, the down swing chunk, the impact chunk, like that. Yeah, and it's like breaking down how you walk. If you were walking to open the front door, you wouldn't be taking it step by step by step and then breaking it down further. Yeah. Just walk to the door. Your body reacts accordingly. It's very difficult for a coach to see something through somebody else's eyes and to associate any kind of feeling with that individual. What you feel in a golf swing, what I feel in a golf swing are completely different. How you interact with that golf club, how I interact with that golf club. We can't assimilate. We can't. We can't associate with that because with each other because we don't really know. So we're assuming there's a lot of assumption, and we all know the feel and real thing. You know, you have to look at a lot of the golf books. Some of the most revered golf books in history, the guys who wrote them didn't even do what they were writing about. So if those guys haven't got that level of self awareness, what does the average guy who comes for a lesson have in motor learning? What what would a correction be? It's the coach telling the Telling, telling the pupil what they're doing wrong in their eyes. And uh, it's a false and fix approach. It's, so it's saying this is what's wrong and this is how we need to correct the movement. And this is the part of the swing that's, that's at fault. And this is how we need to change that swing. How does that fare as, as a way to get better at something? As far as like, okay, I've done it. There's a something obvious that you're doing wrong. And the coach tells you, no, 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 you're not, don't do it that way. Do it this way. Does, how does that fare in the research as far as getting someone better at any kind of skill, not just golf? The research now points in the favor of self-organized learning. So that's, I would say that success rate is not particularly high. In other directions, not, not high for correct. Yeah. No, there are research, there is research out there about blocked, blocked, blocked learning. Um, but, and, but we know now the modern day, the modern literature and the modern research is talking about, uh, variability in training random and varied practice, uh, spacing and interleaving. 
literally all multitasking, asking the body to multitask, going from step, going from different tasks, from task to task to task, high level of variability. In respect to a, a corrective approach, it's quite a high level of failure too. And this right. is this is the this is the job of the coach to find the right challenge point for the pupil because I mean it's okay failing, but it does require understanding from the pupil. But um a high level of failure, obviously that's not good for motivation. So that's the job of the coach to find the right the right level. So I mean, there's, there's, there's papers out there that, are, I mean, they, they put an 85% su uh, success rate on it. That's the kind of optimal, these kind of 50 okay. error, error, error rate. So as enough time to, I mean, I, I, my lessons are now three hours. I don't do really less than a three hour lesson. So I, right. I have people come for a half day or a full day um, or two days. Um, and so I recently had a lady from LA actually, and she came for two days. And um, yeah, I think, you need that. You need that volume of time, and they need to understand this journey. Uh, but there is success along the way. I mean, you'll see from my videos. I mean, that that happens every day. I mean, the lessons tell me what they're changing. So they'll say, right. "I'm just changing. I'm, I'm just I'm moving around." But they don't. They're not telling me specific mechanics. They're just going, I'm, "I need to do this. I need to do that." And they're they're starting to tell me how they're uh, they're adapting their mechanics. So I'm not. I never ever tell anybody. Or if I do, I'm. I kind of I have to check myself because I don't want to tell anybody how to move. I don't tell anybody how to grip. I don't tell anybody the the, the fundamentals. Uh, in, I invite the body. I offer. I, I challenge the body um, into an opportunity for movement. So either that's grip or stance. So I use things like balance discs. Basically, what I do is I create a state of instability, so a state of chaos. So if you create turbulence, if you kind of perturbate the system. The body starts to react in a very organized, orderly, efficient manner. Yeah. So it, it self organizes very, very quickly. But that's the job of the coach to play around with the, the right constraints. Ice skate. Me and you go ice skating and we're there at the rink and I'm like, Brendan, I'm off. I want the penguin. That little penguin, kind of like a little stabilizer, like like it's like a zimmer frame thing. I'm going around on this penguin and you're there. Yeah. The ice walker, yeah. So I'm using the ice walker and I'm off and I'm having a bit of fun and I'm loving life and you're like clambering on the side and falling all over and trying to find your feet. And right. but you're you're starting to learn about, you start to quickly find your feet. You might be hanging onto the side and you're, you're looking a bit clumsy and foolish and I'm I'm just, I'm off and I'm about and tight. You're ripping around, yeah. Loving it. But then you start to find your feet and then you're starting to get a bit of control, but you might not be able to stop. You might be hitting things, but you're getting used to the edges of the skates and you're getting used to the ice and you're getting used and you're starting to control your movement. And yeah. if we fast forward that four or five weeks and we've been going once a week, by week four or five, you're going to be whizzing around that ring and I'm still on the uh, the walker. You take right. you take the walker away from me and I'm back on, I'm back on the floor. I'm back to yeah. what? And I'm, I'm way behind you. Think of our low point of our swing. <clears throat> if this is where I am here, the low point of the swing is kind of just below the surface. Yeah. If I was to extend it out, what this is doing, this is giving you a sense of how low you can actually go. To be able to give you the opportunity now to spring, because as soon as you push, this is going to release. But what happens, Romy, is that that goes faster than the low point rising. So you catch the ball on, on its way to the low point. Yeah. But you're going up. But if we don't go down enough here to start in the, in the change of direction, the problem is, is if I push, I get an early release yeah. and I've got my old problem back where I start to hit it a bit spinny, it launches a bit high. You're creating some club head speed, but it's not, it's, it's not usable by the time you get to the ball. Mm -hmm. The direction we want to move into with our movement is start to, while this is getting thrown up there, to start to explore how far we can go down yeah. into this space. Bring that up and meet it with your right arm now and feel how low you are. Yeah, you feel low. <laughs> yeah. Now this is not a position, this is just this is just how low you can actually go to then use the ground, because from here now you'd be, you'd be pushing off the ground. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to enable you to strike the ball. Yeah. So this is just giving you a sense of depth, depth perspective. That's all. If actually, what what have I got to to go? How how far can I actually move up in there? Oh. Yeah. 
what's a lot, what's too much, what's not enough. I mean that, yeah, I mean that's super low, but it's allowing you now to jump, exactly. Bear in mind you would have, there's all this the shifting going on. These exercises are all just going to start to form to just kind of feeling. Yeah. A feeling in yeah. this way. Well done.